Mm. Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas joins me now. Senator, welcome. Uh, so we know that inflation is the number one issue. Can a president just will that away and say, you know, we're just going to talk about voting rights and make, you know, his constituents, make the population care about voting rights and not about how much it costs to put gas in the car or buy your groceries? Does he have the power to do that? Well, to I guess he can you know, talk from, about it, from Rachel, kitchen table issues. That's not, that's not yeah. Gonna, yeah, that's not going to change it, though. I mean, I, I think what you're seeing in Washington is the Democrats failed to pass their reckless $5 trillion tax and spend plan, so they decided to move on to something else. This election takeover bill that would federalize our election and impose California's voting system on all 50 states, they're going to fail at that as well. And they're going to waste all the time doing that when we should be addressing the concerns of the American people. Like you said, we just got a new inflation report today that shows inflation as high as it's been in 40 years. Americans are paying three and a half or four and a half dollars a gallon for gas. They're going to the grocery store this week and they can't find eggs or milk or ground beef or chicken. That's what the American people expect us to do to address their genuine concerns and their day-to-day -day needs, not to address what the Democrats are making up about states that have acted to protect the integrity of their elections. So you're bumping into Democrat senators every day on Capitol Hill. Do you sense panic among your colleagues? I do sense a lot of fear among the Democrats, especially those who are going to have to face the voters later this fall. You can even begin to see some cracks in the Democratic uh, congressmen and senators uh, when it comes to the administration's handling of the coronavirus. Uh, you know, with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris acknowledging that they didn't anticipate the Omicron variant, they didn't order enough testing, they promised they would. Remember, Joe Biden campaigned against Donald Trump on saying President Trump had mismanaged the coronavirus and that he would manage it better. Yet we've had more deaths over the last year. We have widespread inflation and in going to year three of this pandemic that we didn't have in the first year. This is all the result of the Democrats' reckless tax and spending policies and the continued mandates and lockdowns you see not just from Joe Biden, but from Democratic governors and mayors across the country. Yeah, I've been trying to figure out what the strategy is for the Democrats. And all I can figure out, Senator, <laughs> is that their strategy is to, you know, not talk about the economy, you know, cover their eyes, pretend it's not happening and just talk about race. And they're doing that with this voter um, integrity, you know, bills. And they're saying, you know, hey, you know, these uh, I mean, I don't know. You're on Capitol Hill. Have you seen one hearing with one disenfranchised voters because of this, uh, the Georgia laws or the other laws in the states that were passed? I haven't seen one person come forward and say that they've been disenfranchised. So I don't understand why they keep pounding this. Well, I haven't either, Rachel. And look, their election takeover bill would prohibit a lot of election integrity measures that Americans of all races favor. Take photo identification, for instance. They argue that's voter suppression, yet large majorities of African-American voters and Latino voters believe that you should have to show a photo ID when you go to vote. Of course, that's just one small example of the way the Democrats are reintroducing racially discriminatory policies across our government. You know, just in the last couple of weeks, we've seen the FDA trying to distribute life-saving medication on the basis of race and indicating and suggesting to local health care providers that if they don't give out that medicine, those monoclonal antibodies for coronavirus treatment based in large part on race, then they might not get future supply of those things. That is antithetical to everything that America stands for. That's right. You sent a letter to the FDA demanding answers on that. I, do you expect to get an answer? What are you, what are you hearing? Well, we'll see. The Biden administration certainly hasn't been prompt in responding to congressional oversight letters. That may be because they don't have a lot of good answers to give. I mean, look at the hearing that we had yesterday about the January 6th riots last year when we asked some pretty basic yeah. questions about who was involved in those riots and how many arrests had occurred, how many charges had been uh, uh, filed. The assistant attorney general couldn't even provide those basic answers. It's like he woke up yesterday and he didn't even know he was supposed to be testifying. Yeah, it was pretty shameful. Senator Cotton, thanks for joining us. Thank you.